we hear from Jesus' farewell discourse in the Gospel of John. And what is happening church-wise is the church is getting us ready for Pentecost, saying that Jesus will be taken up and then, not in this passage, but then the Spirit will come. And we hear from St. Paul. You hear something profound from St. Paul. Maybe you don't like to hear it. I know I don't like to hear it. Because I've got some sort of disorder in my brain that says someday everything is going to go like smooth sailing as a Christian. It's going to be smooth sailing from here on out. But Paul says... It is necessary that we undergo, <laughs> we undergo great tribulation for the kingdom of God. I don't like to hear that. I want to hear, hey man, you got this. Jesus is with you. Smooth sailing from here on out. It's necessary that we must undergo hardship for the kingdom of God. And that's not just for Paul. We know Paul's story, how he persecuted the Christians. Then he had that blinding light hit him. He fell to the ground. He heard the voice of Jesus saying, Paul, or Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you, sir? I am Jesus and you are persecuting me. Well, it's like, well, I thought I was persecuting your church, but it sounds like you and your church are one. So he's led by hand to Damascus. He receives his baptism. His eyes are opened and he commits himself to the sake of the kingdom. It's necessary that we undergo many hardships for the kingdom of God. I think about that as I ponder these last few years. I talked to a couple recently and they were lamenting a young couple, they were lamenting the friends that they have lost during this whole COVID thing because there was this, there's all kinds of polarizations going on, but polarization in the church, polarization as far as COVID, and there are those that say, you know, there is no disease, and you're like, well, I got a list of people that died, and there's polarization with masks and social distancing and there's polarization with vaccines and all these things and all these polarizations create this tension and these this young couple says yeah we've lost friends people that we thought were treasured friends have essentially abandoned us and it's heartbreaking and then we lost people to this imaginary disease that some people think is it's just not there and you're like well I don't know I'm not a doctor but they had something and that something killed them I remember sitting in the chapel and people coming in there and praying and crying because somebody in the family had COVID and sometimes that led to death I've done many funerals here and one third according to the statistics that I read one third of the people of the United States during this pandemic were in a state of depression it is necessary that we must undergo many hardships for the kingdom of God. Then you got the folks that yell at the folks that aren't wearing masks, and then you got the folks that aren't wearing masks yelling at the other folks. And then you got folks that took the vaccine and others that didn't, and they're yelling at each other. And all this stuff on social media that just makes us cringe. And then it seems like we start to emerge from this and this goofy stuff in the Ukraine starts happening. Invasion by the Russian forces to force 
this sovereign nation to become part of the old Soviet Union, in a sense, people dying. I, I, I see the, the, the shelling of apartment buildings, and you're like, these aren't combatants, these are people living in their homes, and you shell their apartment buildings. And uh, a, a military force as high-tech as the Russians are, you, you mean to tell me you can't tell the difference between a apartment complex and those that are combatant troops. Then there was this whole thing with job loss and business closing. All these businesses closing because they couldn't operate and the government placing these restrictions on them to where they, they, can't, they can't operate that keeps them within their budget, so they close. Then after that, we can't seem to find workers to go back to work. Where did they go? I, I don't know. I don't know. It is necessary that we must undergo much hardship to enter the kingdom of God. I remember asking my spiritual director at the beginning of COVID, what's gonna happen to us? Are we gonna be celebrating mass in caves like we did in the early church, hiding? He said, maybe. People have found, I, I, talking to them, they say, well, it's not back to normal. I guess maybe there's a new normal. I don't like the new normal. I remember during the peak of the COVID thing that us priests were not getting together for anything. And it's like, gosh, I, I need my brother priests in order to feel fortified in the priesthood. We weren't seeing them. We weren't getting together in meetings or workshops or formation sessions. It just was awful. And then to watch the news, even maybe some of the more conservative news, and everything is negative. Every year, like, wait a second, there's got to be something good happening in the world. It's necessary that we must undergo great tribulation in order to enter the kingdom of God. See, I think it's going to be smooth sailing sooner or later. There's something in the back of my mind that says that. But if I look at the life of St. Paul and St. Peter, like, mm, or St. Bernadette, Mm. I don't know, but I believe what the Lord has told us, that in order to get through these things, we must accept his love and we must love. One of the things that I've been learning through this whole ordeal is to try to be grateful, thankful, and see the good things in the day. Yesterday I went out to very West Valley to see some parishioners I haven't seen in a long time. And I'm, I decided, you know, because it's a long ways to ride my motorcycle and gasoline is $5 a gallon. And the bike gets about 60 miles to the gallon, so that's good. And it's also cathartic sometimes to ride the bike. And then the freeway closed. <laughs> 75th Avenue, they just shut it down. And I mean, for miles before that, it slowed up. And I hear it's like, and then they route us off the freeway. And then, I, I, I'm sorry, if you work for the freeway department, uh, I, I understand. You know, I used to work on heavy equipment, but I didn't see anything going on. Maybe it was going on. I didn't see anything going on. 
They just lock, and you're like, well, where, where are the scrapers and the loaders and the motor graders and, and, the, uh, and the, the paving equipment? I don't see anything going on. And they route us off the freeway. And the temptation is to fall into a snit or, or getting ticked off. Like, okay, okay, I haven't seen these friends in two years. That's what's important. And they have a brand new baby girl. And they have one of the baby girls that we baptized here a couple years ago. She's two now. And I'm riding along, riding along, riding along, going down this road, going down that road, looking at the freeway. Is there any tra Finally get back on on 107th Avenue. And then get off and uh, finally, and, and I said, hey, where's Luke Air Force Base from here? And they said, straight north. That's how far out it is. And see that two-year-old that I baptized, she is so cute, so adorable with her little light brown hair. And she was saying things that I couldn't understand. And it's funny because she's really, really friendly where her big sister is like hide, and her big sister seven hiding behind mom like she used to do when we come out the front door there. And then the other one in the, was in the middle and then they had this beautiful little baby girl and grandma was there holding that child so preciously, so preciously. Reminds me of what two priests have said during COVID to me. One was in the Holy Land, a legionary of Christ, and I was talking, he says, how's the last year gone? Because he's been there in the Holy Land for years. He was in the valley uh, 16 years ago. And when he introduced himself to me, I said, you know, I, I know you, I remember you. You were at Queen of Peace, or I'm sorry, not Queen of Peace, Our Lady of Guadalupe and Chandler for a little while priest originally from Ireland and we talked and he he's a talker he's a talker and he I talked about these last few years and he says Father John we have to remember God is in control God is in control he's a religious order priest then my current spiritual director he lives in Mora New Mexico now and I talked to him, uh, not, I can't do what I used to do, go over to his parish, but I talked to him on the phone. And he's so good about reminding me of this, and I'm reminding you of this as well. Right? Be like Mary and ponder the goodness of God. It's so easy to see the negativity. It's so easy to see the negativity. Ponder the goodness of God, and it's there. It's there. Sometimes we're not looking for it, and sometimes we do not acknowledge it, but we need to, because that's what gets us through, the goodness of God. You know, I got on that bike last night to come home, and you go through part of the valley. It was warm yesterday. Go through the part of the valley where it's much cooler than, say, central Phoenix, and you're just like, can you stop and ponder the goodness of God and say thank you. This, is, I believe, is what the Lord is saying too when he says love. Love one another. It's to ponder the goodness of God, to love God and find those good things in the midst of the stuff and thank him. Like, get up in the morning, right? And if it's cool, to step on and go, yeah, thank you. Thank you for the sunshine. I don't know about you, but I've lived in places like Oregon Sunshine <laughs> is a rare commodity, and we have it a lot. Friends, this is how we get through. It's necessary that we must undergo great hardship for the kingdom of God. How do we do that? We ponder the goodness of God, and we ask him to teach us to love as he did.